Welcome to The Point of View. This is your favorite current affair show on television. Here on The Point of View, we pick the right topics, we get the right guests, we ask them relevant questions on issues that matter to you. It's an interactive show. We have a big conversation tonight on the biggest subject this past week and this week. So on February 28, that's last week, Ghana's parliament, which is usually divided, approved the controversial law which criminalizes same-sex marriage. Now, this was done by consensus. It generated a lot of controversy. It's called the Human Sexual Rights and Families Values Act 2024. Tonight, we're going to give you a quick breakdown of the implications of this law. We speak to some very important people with different perspectives on the law to give us a more comprehensive understanding of what is really at stake. Stay with us. Welcome back. So tonight we are going to be delving into the Human Rights and Family Values Act 2024, which has been passed by consensus. Usually on many issues, the Parliament of Ghana is divided, but on this matter, which was a private member's bill with seven minority and one majority MP, the bill has gone through. Now, the bill is divided into 20 parts, starting from the application, the duty to promote human sexual rights and family values, prohibition against subverting family values, and then LGBTQAP plus and related activities also there. And then there's the prohibition of those acts, pro pro procuration, detention with intent to commit prohibition of sexual activity, a lot of details. What we'll do tonight is to give you some background to how we got here and then I'll speak to some important people. I'll be speaking to Dr. Amanda Odwe, who is a gender and human rights advocate. She has an interesting background because when this matter was even in process, she had attempted to go to court to seek some interpretation and to stop this law. We'll speak to her about the implications of this law from that angle. The Ghana Pentecostal and Christian Council, or Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, have issued a statement urging the president to quickly assent the bill which they fully agree with. We'll speak to the General Secretary, Apostle Emmanuel Okule, Ni Okule Tete, on this bill. Professor Kujo Apia J. Etuya is a law professor. He thinks that this bill presents some important human rights challenges. We'll speak to him as well. We'll also speak to some parliamentarians. Alexander Penyuma King was my guest last week on this show. And being the majority leader, I wanted to find out from him why he had tried to tidy up the bill using that in a very uh, respectful sense because he had said that he did not believe in custodial sentences for people who practice same-sex acts. Here's an excerpt of the conversation I had with Alexander Penyoma King from last week. I think that the latest law that we have in Parliament, this LGBT thing, I think that we shouldn't be emotional about it. I've been thinking battling this should a man be incarcerated because of sexual relationship i've been asking that in principle i am not against mm. the need to enact on ghanian values and proper but, but sexual I think the punishment is but the punishment bit and what do you, the media seem not to have realized is that subtle attempt to gag. To gag you and also to reintroduce criminal libel. You guys have not read it. We the have. entire media landscape has not looked at that provision. Because we, 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 we repealed the criminal libel in 2001 and said that, look, when a, a media house, you know, uh, offends an individual through mm. defamation, whatever, your claim should lie in the civil court, not criminal court. Now, you are saying, we are in Parliament, we are saying today that should a media house mm. choose a certain editorial policy which offends the law, it should amount to, upon conviction, amount to incarceration. I think that's a serious matter. Then it means that those, the press freedom as guaranteed by the Constitution is being brought to question. So you got a sense that the media and some mem members of parliament are being drawn by sentiment more than... Exactly. Than I mean, a lot of my colleagues, I mean, a lot of my colleagues 
came to me and said, look, leader, this thing, we have a problem. But we fear if we talk. So if you realize, in one of my applications, in one of the motions that I lost, I asked Mr. Speaker whether he could exercise his discretion and allow for secret ballots. A lot of people were post pushing for that. They wanted secret ballots. You think ballot. if there was a secret ballot, some of the amendments would have Some of the amendments would have carried. I tell you, honestly. Because people are afraid. They don't know, you know. But if we have MPs who don't have the moral courage to well, stand up I, for what they believe, I, then we are in trouble. I, 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 before taking up that position, engaged some clergymen. I spoke to some prominent people who are very religious. I spoke to some very senior Christian clergy. I spoke to them. They won't allow me to mention their names, and I won't do that. But I spoke to them, I said, also for Reverend, Bishop, Father, this aspect of custodial sentence, and all of them, they agreed, will tell me that, oh, Honorable, yes, as in Mbomizon, yen Mbom, wobo kwe jil susuze, yen jin tu. So you, you notice that Afenyo King's consent had more to do with the custodial sentencing and also expressing views around the harshness of the law, which ev eventually he agreed to pass. So there's a political thing going on there as well. He, he spoke about how a lot of the MPs, if they had their way for a secret ballot, would have said they didn't agree to the bill. But because of the political capital to be gained, possibly from the bill, he believes the bill was passed. Now, another important group that has been speaking on this is the Catholic Church. The president of the Catholic Bishop Conference has been speaking. In fact, the day after the bill was passed, Umar Sanda Madu had a quick interview with the president of the Bishop's Conference, who is Bishop Matthew Jemfi. Now, very interesting views by Matthew Jemfi. They, they are support the bill largely, but they are saying the president should consider necessary amendments to the bill before he passes it. For example, they did not think that custodial sentences for people who practice same-sex acts or people who identify as such are on. He, he, he does not believe so. Let me just give you a quick excerpt of that interview as well because that's really an important part because the Christian group generally, in fact, the religious base have generally supported the bill. But for the Catholics to now say they support the bill but they believe that custodial sentences, which the bill pro prescri prescribes, are disproportionate. That's an interesting angle. So let's hear uh, Bishop Matthew Jemphy's views before we talk to our live guests. You see, that is why the law also says those who promote uh, this behavior, and that means they are going against this law that Parliament has now made. Those people to be punished, those are the ones who to be criminalized, the promotion and the encouragement to people to get involved in this. If they stop that, then many young people will not learn this behavior. They won't try it. And therefore, those who are going into this behavior reduce significantly, as it used to be in the past. It has always been there. But because it was not being promoted and people look on that, this is not part of it, those who were naturally or so-called naturally not in class, they would not even experiment with it, let alone to get addicted to it. So that will reduce the number. And those people who promote it should be criminalized. Now, those who already get involved with the real act of behavior, now we hear and we know that there are counseling centers, even medical disciplines, and other things where these people should be bundled or placed, and they are compulsorily made to go through this cure, this counseling, this service, like alcoholics, like drug addicts, like this. And once you have made a law, is to correct these people who have gotten addicted to this. And this sort of a type of punishment or imprisonment like that is more corrective more reformative, and they will come back to society whole and will contribute their quota. Remember, these people are our own sons and daughters. They are our nephews and nieces. 
our brothers and sisters. And we have to do things so that it does not hurt them and not correct them, but things that they, that will still hurt them, but then it will reform them and correct them. So that was uh, Bishop Matthew Jemphy. Very interesting position. We support the bill. The president should pass it, but he should make the necessary amendments. One would have asked, why didn't they make those amendments whilst it was in process? Be that as it may. Let's come to our live guests. Now, let me bring in first the Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council, Apostle Emmanuel Ni Okule Tete. They are in full support of the bill as it stands, and they want it passed. Apostle, thanks for joining us. Welcome to The Point of View. Good evening. Good evening, and thanks for having me, please. So, can I say there appears to be a division in the Christian group when it comes to this bill? Because, yes, there's a Ghana uh, Pentecostal and Charismatic Council who fully support the bill as it stands. The yeah. Catholics say they, they are in agreement with the bill. They think the president should pass it. But they are proposing some amendments. For example, he thinks, he doesn't think, uh, but Bishop Matthew Jeffrey doesn't think that jailing people will benefit society. What's your view on that departure? Okay, thank you very much. Um, as you mentioned, coming from the president of the Catholic Bishops Conference, uh, maybe he has some information or other inputs, probably the rest of us within the fraternity don't have. Uh, let me start off by saying that I'm not a lawyer, so I'm not approaching this conversation from a, a legalistic point of view. Though I subscribe to the discussions and the way the bill has been crafted, um, we, we are not looking for people who are into LGBTQI to prosecute. No, we are not going around looking for search to prosecute. What we are looking at more is the public advocacy, public promotion of search. Um, what we are saying is this. Um, we, we don't go around asking people whether you are gay or you are non-gay, no. What we are saying is the imposition, the attempt to impose some values and culture into our system to make it look like it is normal and that we should promote it and accept it is what the christian council the ghana pentecostal and charismatic council and to the best of my knowledge the ghana catholic bishops conference are standing by and so on that score we i believe that we are all on the same page on, on this so that is how we come into this conversation. So are you saying that the part of the law that imposes a jail sentence, permit me to read this. So if you go to yes, please. section 4.1, a person commits an offense if the person, one, engages in sexual intercourse with a person of the same sex. Roman 2, yes. sexual intercourse with an animal or pansexual yeah. activity. B, marries or purpose to marry a person of the same sex as that person. C, knowingly marries or purpose to marry a person who has undergone gender or sex reassignment, except in the case yeah. of a person who undergoes a surgical procedure to correct a biological abnormality, including in intersex. D, marries yeah. or purpose to marry an animal or object. Holds, and then E, holds out, so identifies as lesbian, gay, transgender, sexual, transsexual, queer, pansexual, ally, or non-binary, or mm -hmm. others. Then it goes on then to prescribe two, a person who commits an offense under paragraph A, B, C, D, E, F, G, all the things I've read, mm. yeah. commits a misdemeanor and is liable on summary conviction to a fine of not less than 750 yeah. penalty units and not more yeah. than 5,000 penalty units or a term of imprisonment of not less than two months and not more than three years or two both. So that's the concern that why are you, so are, are you saying that you agree with the Catholics if they say jail is not the issue or you, you are not sure because there's ex an explicit no. provision for <coughs> jailing people. Yes. Yes. So, um, Bernard, like I said earlier, you see, we are aware that 
the approach of the LGBTQI fraternity is not something, I mean, I don't, I, I wear a ring and I am married. You have to ask me who I'm married to for me to tell you that I'm married to lady Dr. So so and so. Okay. I, I don't go around saying that everybody or others should come along with me and be doing what I'm doing. And like I'm saying, nobody is going around with cameras asking people what you do in your room. But you see, to the extent that we want to bring it into schools and to make it a human rights thing, that people should be allowed openly, and we discuss this, children should be allowed, and we've seen it done in home countries of the people who are strongly resisting this. We, we know it, and so we are not speaking from a position of, if you like, ignorance, or where there have not been the practice. We know where this has come from, even in the Western countries. And gradually, now it's an imposition. In their own countries, it came to a time when people cannot speak against it. If you speak against it, then, I mean, your child, your child, children are supposed to be parented. But they've got into a place where your child has power over the parents now to decide what they want to do. Now, this thing comes in in a very subtle way. They bring presenting it as if it is a human right thing. It's, but we are seeing the outcomes in their own countries. And we wouldn't sit for them to bring it down on us and impose it on us. We have a society, we have a culture, we have a people. And we are saying that this practice, we don't want to make it part of our system. If you are into it, stay with it. But don't try and impose it and make us accept it mm. culturally. That is, but, that but, is but, the bottom but, line. But uh, Apostle, the, yes. what you just said is already in the law. If you go exactly. to 11, it talks yes. about prohibition of propaganda of promotion and advocacy for activities directed at a child. So that's yes. not necessarily my focus, but it has gone beyond what you are saying to now even say that if somebody practices this, in fact, and you know they are practicing it, you should report them. So it's almost like you are now going to ask people to breach people's privacy by finding out what they do in their bedrooms. That's point number one. No, no, no. It's, no. it's, it's clear. It's there. Okay. It's there. So All it right. talks about people who, finish, know, who know that somebody is practicing should report. Then it yeah. also then criminalizes even giving uh, a space for people who are protesting or speaking about. So it's beyond what you're saying. So un unless you're yeah. saying that, you, if, if you've seen what is in front of me, it, it yeah. deals with privacy, it deals with press freedom, it deals yes. with people's rights to adopt a child. So that's way beyond what you're saying. What you're saying is there, but it's be far beyond it. So the, the no, question no. is, does the GPCC know the full extent and implications of what you are supporting beyond what you claim you are advocating no no um you see when you say it is there bernard like i said earlier um it is not as though we've not seen it coming we have seen it coming uh, we don't want to close our eyes to it when you you see it coming you take precautions um, the point being made here, I, I, I use myself severally as an example. Maybe, I mean, for purposes of the conversation, let me even try and frame you into this. That Bernard, as you and I are conversing now, there is no issue about whether my marriage is a gay marriage or my marriage is a heterosexual marriage. No, there is no conversation about that and nobody goes about asking, so what kind of sex do you have? It is when I, I go around and I'm trying to solicit sex acts, that is when we start having an issue. You see, so, I mean, I wouldn't meet somebody in the street, per the person's behavior and ask, what do you do? No, I wouldn't do that. But you see, the problem comes from the gay, I mean, fraternity. 
their desire to openly impose this upon us and that is where i stand and we wouldn't want it to start before we start fighting it mm. so point being made here point being made here bernard is that if i get to know and how would i get to know um i get to know that person a or male a and male b are having such a kind of relationship what we're saying and this is probably 98 percent of our country 98 percent of the population are saying that we don't want same sex i mean same yeah same gender sex or i don't know how to put it but male male sex or female female sex as you put it over 90 percent of us 98 percent or more are saying we don't want this are we not free to decide what we want and what we don't want is that what we are saying are we not free to decide to say that this one our culture and as a people we don't want it a whooping 99 or 98 percent says we don't want this should it be imposed on us mm. that we don't mm. want men and men to be sleeping together well if they are doing it they should keep it to themselves but if they're bringing it into the public space and beginning to talk it becoming public conversation then we're going to have an issue yeah. the law partially addresses that but goes beyond what you are trying to achieve by doing other things that both um bishop matthew jamfie and yourself are claiming you yeah. don't necessarily want so I mean, we need to look at the law but i'll take a break when i come back i'll yeah. get more into this now the other issue okay. we'll look at is the implications of this for ghana because already the imf has issued a statement saying they're monitoring the situation closely we're already in an imf program there are discussions around national sovereignty and laws i also show you the span of countries in africa that either prescribe or make same-sex relationships illegal all of that the moment we come back stay with us Welcome back to the point of view tonight. We're discussing the implications of Ghana's parliament passing by consensus the uh, family uh, or the anti LTPQ law. It's a long name. We just want to use that. It's a bill. Now, key point the president has not yet signed the bill into law. There are people who feel that the president will not sign on the basis of some of the human rights issues in there. Uh, I'll deal with those legal arguments shortly, but let me just read a couple of stories. So, Moses Fuamini, one of the key proponents of the bill, says Akufado is a smart politician who has sent the anti-LGBTQ plus law. Let me just read two paragraphs. Moses Fuam Wening, Executive Secretary for the National Coalition for Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Bill, believes that President Nana Akufado will sign the recently passed anti-LGBTQ plus law. Now, the Fuam Wening underscores the potential political implications if the President fails to sign the bill, warning that the opposition NDC could gain political advantage in the 2024 general elections. Here's a quote. Well, the President is a smart politician. <laughs> And what I've told everybody who asked me this question is, first of all, there's no president who has ascended the presidency of Ghana who has used the word of God more than this president. So the point I'm trying to make is, with all that I know about the president, I know he will sign the bill. So that was Moses Farm winning. Then Gabi Otridaku, who is um, somebody quite close to the president, tweeted last week, or is it, yeah, a couple of days ago. And he says, passage of anti-LGBTQ bill comes with consequences. Gabi Ostridaku, who is a, a prominent member of the MPP, former executive director of the Danko Institute, has warned that the passage of the anti-LGBTQ bill will come with consequences. Now, in a statement posted on X, Mr. Ostridaku expressed his concern about the enactment of what he termed a harsher anti-LGBTQ plus bill and highlighted the possibility, possible implications. And then he called for education from the media and the politicians to inform citizens about the advantages and disadvantages of the bill if it comes into law. So that's uh, the view expressed by Gabi Ochre Daku. International media, if you read Bloomberg, Ghana joins African nations seeking jail for LGBTQ plus people. The bill they started discussing three years ago, bill requires presidential assent to become law. They have a map, countries that have criminalized LGBTQ same-sex marriage, Sudan, Mauritania, Senegal, Sierra Leone, Nigeria, 
Somalia, Kenya, Uganda, Tanzania, Zambia, Zimbabwe, the whole list is there. Nigeria even has death penalty in the northern parts of the country. Sharia law is there as well. Dr. Mandaudwe is a gender and human rights uh, academic. Doc, thanks for joining us on The Point of View. Good evening. Um, just to be clear, are you the same person who tried to go to court to stop the, the passage at some mm -hmm. point in the process? Are you the self-same, Dr. Audrey? Yes. Wonderful. So do I take it that even though that attempt suffered a setback, you're going to go back based on everything you know to, to get the court to, to declare this law unconstitutional? Um, thank you very much, Francis, again. I think that um, we need to clarify it. Well, the first attempt was to have an injunction on the process, but then the substantive case is still in court and we are still on it, so it's not been scrapped totally. And yes, um, if, it, if beyond that, we, I still intend to go to court if it becomes, um, if, um, after if the uh, president decides to assent, yes, something I would want to push up a further, but that will be a different case from the interpretation of the Article 108 that we took to the Supreme Court. This will also be a different issue altogether. So, so that case is still in court. It's not being scrapped totally. So my understanding is that you believe that the law violates fundamental human rights and therefore it should not stand. Yes, certainly. And also beyond that is the fact that the, the language, the provisions um, in, in the bill are very subjective, vague, and, and has implications if we don't pay attention to certain aspects of it. So, for example, uh, the earlier speaker stating his position as to why they support versus the struggle we've been ha having versus what is actually in the bill and what we seek to. So this, this, um, the argument out there is that um, we don't like fear practices. We don't want same-sex relationships. And then some people are saying, we don't care what same-sex persons do. We don't, we don't care what they do in their bedroom, but what is outside and what is outside it's subjective. So what's our side is criminalizing people that say that. Same thing. Don't bother about what people do in their bedroom. Let it be there. Don't let us pass laws to criminalize what's happening um, in people's bedroom. And you're saying that when somebody says that, the person is an ally and can be jailed for it. That is a problem. When you're saying that anybody that purports to marry an object or um, animal. Uh, animals can't consent, so definitely there'll be a problem. But to say purpose to marry an object, when there are tra some traditional practices that makes it possible for some people to be married and say that, okay, because you are this person, you'll be married to this God, and because of that, um, you will not marry any human being, man or woman, again. And you're saying that such a person should be arrested. That is a problem. And there are provisions that say that the use of sex toys, you're saying that the use of sex toys in heterosexual relationships is fine, but the use of sex toys in, in homosexual relationships is an offense. These are contradictory positions, and these are very dangerous positions that we have to pay attention to. You're saying that anybody that decides to support surgery, and then you're, you're talking about um, children, nobody is saying in Ghana that um, whether heterosexual or homosexual, go around sleeping with kids and forcing kids to have sex. You are using economics as an argument as to saying that people are being forced into peer relationships because of economic reasons. When even in heterosexual relationships, rational choice arguments is that when we are making choices of partners, it's based on the best options and opportunities available to us. You marry some of these, some of the men in Ghana will not be married to them, the kind of women they are married to, if not for the economic standing or certain characteristics they bring to the relationship. So if a queer person chooses to be in a relationship with somebody for the benefits that the person offers, why should the person be criminalized because of that? You will take a partner home and your parents or some friends will ask you, are you sure this person is able to take care of you? These are questions we ask. Presentation of bride price and those things we do in dream marriage tra transaction is to ensure that your partner can take care of you. So heterosexual relationships are also negotiated along the lines of economic relationships. And people we know, we are Ghanaians, we live in a society where parents have forced their children to be married up to wealthy people so that their families will be saved. Why are we not going after those relationships as well? And so there's the, there are various sections of the, of the bill that speaks to a whole lot of this, and we are saying that. Pay attention to these things. Don't limit our everyday cultural transactions and relationships to a certain group and make it look as if they are the only people that will have such implications. And when it comes to the economic bit of it, talking about work. So for example, right now, how would you know um, 
if somebody that's into sex toys business is selling to a queer person or not? Why are you attacking the person that has purchased, purchased that object for sexual relations and not the seller? And this is a booming industry. Heterosexuals are using sex toys to sustain their relationships. Why can't other people also use it to enjoy pleasure and all that in their relations? Why we, should we criminalize somebody for an object they use for pleasure? There, there's so many things in the bill that we need to pay attention to. Then jailing, there's research evidence to point to the fact that there are queer relationships in jail. Even non-heterosexual non, uh, persons in jail are practicing safe sex relationships. Why are you taking to the, those people to jail to go and do? Doc, <laughs> Doc, you've raised, Doc, you've raised a lot of issues about the law, which even listening to the majority leader when I spoke to him earlier, and also listening to the Catholic Bishops' Conference, you get the sense that when people pay closer attention to the law, there are issues. So Apenio Marking was trying to deal with the custodial sentence part. Um, Bishop Jemfi also seems to think the custodial sentence doesn't work. Even your guest on the other line doesn't necessarily insist. So do you, do you suppose that if the, if the bill were put out for more people to read all the details, they wouldn't be as supportive of it as they seem to be doing? And the people are conflating their opposition to same-sex marriages to then supporting all the specific provisions in the bill, some of which are very problematic, <coughs> as, you, as you pointed out. So you think there's that discrepancy there, right? Certainly, because a lot of people, what people actually are there, a number of people are thinking is that this bill just is applicable to only queer persons and the sexual relations with queer relationships. A lot of them do not know the other aspects of the bill. A lot of people actually out there are thinking that this bill is just applicable to queer persons and the sexual relations they engage in and not the other aspects of the issue of, of, of the bill that we've, we've been raising, how it affects even people beyond the queer community and, and people's works, people's livelihood amongst others and how all this may have potential implications. And, and these are things that we have to pay attention to. And then if we had a chance, to be able to break down and educate people and let them understand that if these are the aspects of the bill, the whole, the totality of the bill, this is what it entails and this is what it takes. I'm sure a lot of people will ask that they take most of the aspect, most aspects of the bill out. Th thank you. I'll come back to you. Let me come to a lawyer on the one of the eight sponsors of the bill, uh, lawyer Roxy Nelson Dafia Mekpo is MP for South Dai, and he's also a lawyer by training, just to raise some issues. Uh, Honorable Roxy, thanks for joining us. Good evening. Thank you very much. Uh, I'm privileged to have done it. There's a, a strong feeling that even though most Ghanaians say they don't like same-sex marriage, <coughs> what you and your colleagues have put in the bill is disproportionate and prohibitive. That if, for example, same-sex marriage should be frowned upon, it's not the same as now saying that give a custodial sentence for somebody who practices same-sex marriage. There are many examples, but just the first point there. Are, are you not overreaching, using the custodial sentence as an example, when you now say jail people for practicing same-sex, when you know that a lot of prisons, for example, are notorious for same-sex uh, relationships? Bernard, thank you very much. Um, you see, it's very interesting listening to um, these arguments um, after the passage of the bill into law. This bill attracted over 200 memoranda. And Bernard, you had followed this bill in Parliament. Professor Gadepo herself was with us. My own lecturer in natural resources, Dr. Petria, also came. But you see, the arguments that they canvassed before the committee at the time is materially not the same arguments they are canvassing. Now they have shifted away from the bill being unconstitutional against human, human rights to now saying that, yes, by all means, when people are convicted, uh, sentence them, but don't sentence them to custodia. So they have, they have varied the argument after the bill has been passed. But let me make the point that rights are not absolute. They're not. In this country, you have a right to smoke a tobacco, which is 
uh, a natural vegetative matter. The, uh, the health personnel will tell you the health consequences thereafter. And that if you do so, it's at your own peril. But the smoking of tobacco is not prescribed by the state. But another vegetative plant, which also grows in the world, just like tobacco, marijuana, is prescribed. You think that those who smoke marijuana cannot constitute themselves into a group and say that the ban of smoking marijuana or prescribing the smoke of marijuana is infringing upon their human rights? So the state has the right, even the public policy reasons, to prescribe any conduct that they think is injurious to the public health. All right, you are making the a public health argument. What we seek to prescribe is in respect of our public health. What are we saying? I have read of a serious article. He makes the point that the law bans uh, oral sex so that the, the common mind, the speech, will understand, which is normal among heterosexuals. But we ban the same oral sex among homosexual. Of course we'll do that. I have no evidence that it's a special engaging in oral sex. I don't have that evidence. Neither do I have the evidence that homosexuals engage in oral sex. But we are saying that two men cannot engage in any sexual activity. So whether they do anal sex or they do, they do oral sex, it is sex. And we are banning it. But, but, but Robert Roxen, you ban the use yes. of sex toys among... Uh, same-sex relationships. There are same-sex toys that sell to heterosexual couples. Why should they use it? See, you are talking about oral sex. You don't have evidence that it's practiced among uh, uh, heterosexuals. Now let me let me let me ask the question. In in the in the right? sex toy case, are you not then? Because you know that they are sold, right? Obviously, heterosexual couples buy them. So how come they can use them, but same-sex couples cannot use them? Bernard, you are you are heterosexual, I believe. You go to buy toys. I don't. I don't know. No, I, I, I haven't I don't bought know. some, but the, the point is not that. Yes, the point is yes, that exactly the shops point. exist in Ghana. So, and so we, we cannot. Bernard, yeah. We cannot enact laws based on supposition. We are saying that sex between a male, a biologically male, and a biologically male is banned in all forms Fair and contraption. This let, is what the law is about. Let me go to the next point. The only way to criminalize a consensual sex between a same-sex couple is through, quote-unquote, peeking through the window. Because presumably these sexual acts are not being performed in public. Now, this in, in, infringes the right to privacy, does it not? So my point is, the only way you can say this person is practicing this thing is if you go and peek through the window and see what they are doing. And does that not infringe people's rights to privacy? Not at all, Bernard. The law does not seek to peep into the windows of people. What the law is saying is that a male and a, a male and a male cannot walk the streets of Accra and say that they are married couple and that they can do what a man and a, and a woman will do openly. Two, we are saying that beyond, beyond the concept of sex, you cannot also willfully promote the act of homosexuality. And Bernard, don't let people reduce this matter into homosexual sex between a man and a, a man and a man and a woman and a woman. There are people who want to have sex with pigs. With, with yeah, but, but you can separate that. So they are all there, but you don't put all together, no, do you? No, no, they belong. They belong to the LGBTQP plus. It's a, it's a look. It's, 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 it's yeah, but, but Roxanne, it's, there's it's a big acronym, difference. There's a big difference. That has acquired a technical Ro Roxanne, term of but, act. There's a big difference between a consensual adult same sex relationship and a relationship between a man and an animal, or a man and an object, or a woman and an object and no. an animal. Because Benna. in the other instance, Benna, there, see, is no, there is no consent. And the, 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 
I mean, I'm just trying to say that you've lumped everything together, but you, you have to be clear that they are different, aren't they? Okay. Now, Bernard, how do you seek a consent from an animal? That's my point. But so you, you cannot put consensual oh, sex between so, two people of the same so, sex in so the same bracket as that, that between a man and animal. So we are saying that a man who says that I have the consent of another man to have sex with him is prescribed. We are also saying that a man or a woman who says that I have the consent, I want to have sex with an animal, is also prescribed. Fair enough. So they, 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 I, I understand your point. I just want to go further because of time. The other concern yes. for us is the issue of criminalizing the sharing of content over social media or broadcasting content. Now, you're delving into media freedoms here, right? You're even talking about if somebody organizes a protest match to support any of these practices and the media covers it, the media person or the media house will be held criminally responsible. That's very serious. Not, a, not at all. We have, we have clearly, we have clearly subjected provisions 10 and 11 of the, of the law to the constitution. So we are saying that if, for instance, city, city TV or city news or city FM hears that a group of people are at cycle, they are protesting and, and the thing they are protesting about is news worthy. You can exercise your editorial discretion to go and cover. The law won't come after you because that is the exercise of your dis editorial dis uh, discretion. Now, you are covering that event to broadcast to the nation by way of information that this is the development happening at Seto. So the nation should be put on alert or notice. Now, the law will be looking at the people who organize that event and the intent of the organizing that event if the event is to promote LGBT plus activities, then the law will have its full recourse. All right. So we have not we have not prescribed the constitutional right of media houses to exercise their editorial discretion mm. in this matter. We haven't. All right. The version I have in front of me did not include what you just said. So if, if you're saying that if we can exercise our editorial discretion to cover, because, for example, I'm interviewing Dr. Amanda Odoe, if, based on the law I see in front of me, if it comes into force, you could hold me criminal liable for interviewing somebody who is perceived to support these activities, and somebody could construe that to be promotion. The, the version of what I have here, I got this one on the 29th, so unless you're telling me that, 11 and 12 have been amended or they, they have been tidied up to include that. What I have does not yes. contain the information you are, you are giving Yes, if I, may, if, I may, if I may say this, if you read 10 and 11 as finally amended by Parliament, we are saying that subject to the provisions of the Constitution, a person commits A, B, C, D. So we listed it. So if, if upon the exercise of your editorial discussion, you cover an event, the purposes of your media work for education. I mean, there's no ill intent, there's no malafide, there's no menstrual. City FM or City, City, City TV is not going out of its way to, to cover homosexual activities or activities of LGBTQ people for purposes of promoting it among the citizens. That, that is where the difference is. All right. Thank you for your insights. Thank you for your time. Uh, Roxin Nelson, the family is MP for South Dai, one of the eight MPs who promoted this bill. There are other issues around whether the president will sign because he has not signed two other bills, the witchcraft bill, the suicide other one, possibly because, not possibly, clearly because he believes that they have implications for the public press. And there's a, a sense in which you, one can construe this bill to, to fall in the same category. We'll, we'll find out more about that when we come back. This is still the point of view, delving into the controversial, I guess it's, I, I guess it's fair to say this, Human Rights and Family Values Act, yet to be assented to by the president. Stay with us.
Welcome back, Point of View tonight, bringing you various views on the Human Rights and Human Sexual Rights and Family Values Act. First, we heard from Alexander Fenyo Makin, he was on the show last week, summarizing his arguments. We heard from Bishop Matthew Jemphy, Catholic Church, want the president to sign the bill, but are open to amendments. In, in the, on the line, the General Secretary of Ghana Pentecost and Christian Council, Apostle Emmanuel Okule Tete, Tete, and then, of course, Dr. Amanda Odwe. Let me come back to Apostle. When I read the story from Moses Fuamwini, he said yeah. he believes the president will sign the bill into law because if it doesn't, it will give the NDC an advantage because the opposition leader has said that he doesn't support LGBTQ+. And he, Moses' point is that failure to ascend this law, this bill into law, will be political suicide by the president and, for that matter, the MPP. And my question to you is, is the faith community not being railroaded to support this bill, which is really a political thing, guised under a, a cultural <coughs> values thing? That's my question. <coughs> yeah. Th thanks very much, uh, Bernard. Um, if you please allow me, let me um, pick a few issues uh, Dr. Odoi mentioned earlier, and then, and, and then I'll come to this. Um, Dr. Odoi mentions, interestingly for me, that uh, conversion therapy is dangerous. We are um, advocating for people who are willing to be treated for that matter, through um, psychotherapy, through uh, medical, I don't know what. But that is what is being done. That is what is being done to promote LGBTQI+. People are being injected with hormones. People are being taken through surgery. And I find it interesting that on the flip side, it becomes dangerous, you know, by way of what we would deem as correction, okay? But if people are being injected with hormones, people are being taken through surgery to change their sex structure and all of that, um, it, it is still that conversion therapy, which is, she's saying, is dangerous. And, and so it, it is the same thing we are discussing here except that we are not looking at doing surgery on people we want to avoid we coming to the point where people will be surgically kind of uh, transformed into what they feel they should be and it, it's just, it's been suicidal i mean it's been suicidal um, for a lot of them later on in years um then again we talk about I mean, the opinion, Honorable Majority Leader's point, uh, which Dr. Odwe also reiterates, that um, if homosexuality is happening in the prisons, um, why do we want to add more of them into the prisons? Are we not worsening the situation in there? I don't think that is a fair statement to make because we are not saying that if people are assaulting in prison, if people are jailing, I mean, murdering in prison, it, it is a basis for saying that murderers should not be sent to jail or people who commit assault should not be sent to jail. The problem still needs to be dealt with. And so for me, that point uh, is neither here nor All there. Right. But on, on your on your question on your question um about if you please yes my question my on, on the political you, you are, you are, yes. it's really a political agenda here that no. you are subjecting yourself to no no bernard on the contrary i think the politicians probably will want to ride on the back of the citizens it is not the politicians who are deciding for us the politicians represent us the mps they didn't throw themselves into parliament. Mm. They represent constituents. They represent people. And surveys that have been conducted, including that of CDD, 
shows overwhelming majority of the Ghanaian populace do not subscribe to this practice. I mean, and by the way, if we are saying that the bill is asking for custodial sentence, I think that is at the far end. We have said that if anybody assaults somebody who is known to be a gay activist or practitioner, that person must be dealt with on the legal grounds of assault. All right. We wouldn't protect anybody. Okay. So point ma I'm making is that the politicians probably are rather riding on the back of the constituents, and that is why they can't do otherwise. Um, Bernard, just to take a bit of uh, this, it, it looks to me like we want to sell democracy on the, on the flight of economic and finance that the poor should be decided for. They cannot decide what they want and what they don't want. Because we are a country with a bowl in our hands going around looking for funds, others should decide for us. Will the World Bank or the IMF and the Western countries, don't they know the laws in mm. Saudi Arabia and All in right. the Middle East yeah. pertaining to this practice? What All have right. they done about that? Thank you. Thank you very much, Bishop uh, Apostle. Let me end with Dr. Odwe. Doc, my, my final question to you is the, the point that Roxin made about the memoranda that those who opposed the bill presented. He's trying to say that some of the points being raised now were not raised earlier. He's referring to Professor Apia J. Tuya's um, arguments around certain rights. I'm not sure if you were part of those who raised those points. What's your reaction to that and what's your closing comment? I, I certainly did not hear what went on um, in the studio, but then I, I was part of a group that put together uh, some of the MOUs, and certainly we raised the issues that we are raising now. So I don't know where he is coming from, and also I can't talk much about it because of what I didn't hear what went on. But then I know that we raised these issues, but the assumption is that, okay, we, we have decided. That's the grant, so this is what we are doing. And that's the, that's the challenge you're having right now, because a number of the issues that we raised, we have paid attention to, I don't think will be here. And I want to respond to Reverend and say that nobody is murdering in jail. Prisoners in jail are not. And prison has shown not to be reformative. So countries are shifting from imprisonment to finance. They do not reform people the way we want it to be. What we are saying is that prison is not the solution. Because when you send them to prison, you will not cure them. Because if that is the case, then those in prison should not be. Those who go to prison, people go to prison and come back more hardened. And there's enough research to show that. Jailbirds, there are some people that have become jailbirds in and out because they go there, pick skills and come back out there and practice it. So if we want to understand how the prison system works and even fails us in policy making, thinking that that's the solution, then there's a need for us to look at it before we push people there. And then talking about conversion therapy and the pain, intersex people, there are people that intersex people are taking through serious measures to alter them, especially when a, a medical doctor determines a bed that this is supposed to be female. And then the person is growing and is growing with male hormones. They are, they, they, I have a practical example of somebody I know. The child wants to be left to be male, but because she has been assigned a gender, and then they are saying she's female, they are taking her through a lot of hormonal therapies. And almost every two weeks, this person has to go for injection and other, ther other therapies. These things are painful and detrimental. Please let's read about them. Let's just understand how painful it is. And then you're saying that democracy being built on, on poverty and poor people not, not, not having a say. That's what we are saying, that my minority does not necessarily mean that we should always assume that what we know is right and push our thoughts on them. Let us understand the issues that are going on and see how we can find appropriate solutions. Uh, there's, a, there's a paper that we've worked on called conversion therapy, and we've seen the effects of what Fuamini and his group are doing on people that have procured such services. All right. Please listen to the voices that are around. Don't let us assume that the solution is ultimately because it's coming from majority, 98% that you assume. What questions were asked when that data was being collected? It's what we should also pay attention to. All right. To. Thank you, Dr. Odwe. Uh, we've been speaking to a number of people on this matter. Dr. Amanda Odwe, gender and human rights advocate, who has a substantive case before the courts on this particular bill, which is yet to be assented. Apostle Emmanuel Niokuli Tete, Ghana Pentecostal and Charismatic Council. Roxy Nelson Dafia Mepo also joined us. He is a member of parliament for Saudi and one of the eight MPs 
who are promoters of the bill. Earlier on, we, we, we heard from Alexander Fenyo Makin, who is the majority leader in parliament, and the Reverend Matthew James Fields, the president of the Ghana Catholic Bishops Conference. Thanks for watching. All I can say is watch this space because there's a lot that's going to happen on this in the coming days. Thanks for watching. We'll see you next time. Bye-bye.